Snipers have always been a special class of troops, and perhaps the most controversial. German paratrooper Roland Bartesko, who fought in Bosnia, said that people often despised even their own snipers. For the average soldier, a sniper is a pain in the ass that can attack at any time. Even if the tank's threat is visible, audible, and understandable, a sniper can come from anywhere, anytime. Moreover, a sniper is most likely to shoot when no one expects it. That's why they are disliked. But the ability to hit targets from great distances is impressive to all. Today we will do something unusual. Instead of living a day in the shoes of a singular sniper, we will remember the most legendary and often unknown ones throughout history, listen to their stories, and learn the life of the guys firsthand. Let's begin with theory. The word sniper itself comes from the British word snipe, a type of bird. The roots of the profession go back to India, where British soldiers in the late 18th century organized many competitions between hunters. Snipe is one of the hardest targets because of the color, agility, and illogical behavior during flight. At that time, rifles weren't very developed, and only real masters could shoot a snipe with them. Closer to the middle of the 19th century, the word sniper was popularized and used not just for hunters, but for any person who was a good shot. In many ways, Germans helped with the creation of the term, since they already had a word, Scharfschütze, for a sharpshooter. The British needed their own definition, and sniper replaced the sharpshooter, later spreading to other languages. Of course, people were able to shoot accurately long before the invention of rifles. There are historical records of Mongol archers who performed deadly shots from 150 meters, which at that time was incredible. But today, we will focus on snipers in the relatively modern sense of the word. And one of the first was Mr. Timothy Murphy, whose monument stands in New York to this day. During the American Revolutionary War, rifles were rare, and the weapons were not very good. The pinnacle of weaponry was the Ferguson's rifle, which could fire six rounds in a minute. And at the showcase of its range, it shot a target at a distance of 200 meters, which was considered an incredible result. Our Timothy, armed with this device, took part in the Battle of Saratoga near New York, where British troops wanted to end the rebels. Among 500 elite gunmen, Timothy brought the first significant victory to the supporters of independence and made it onto the pages of history books by killing two British commanders at once. First, the guy got Sir Francis Clerk out of the equation from 300 meters, and later, from the same distance, took down General Simon Fraser. Two shots made a huge contribution to the battle, and considering what a wreck Timothy was shooting from, the results seem unbelievable. John Plaster, a sniper trainer from the United States and a Vietnam veteran, thinks that Timothy's shots are the best in history if we adjust for the equipment he used, and it's hard to argue with him. The next chapter in the history of snipers is also connected to the United States. To be more precise, it has something to do with the stupidity of Britain. During the Crimean War in the mid-19th century, a British gunsmith, Joseph Whitworth, noticed that many soldiers tried to attach glass to their rifles in order to make their task easier. The guy developed an incredible rifle and named it after himself. At a presentation in 1860, Queen Victoria hit the bullseye from a distance of 400 meters and professional shooters hit the target from 800, which in comparison with our last guest was revolutionary. However, Britain refused to adopt the Whitworth rifle. The disappointed guy sold it to France and the US Confederate Army. And during the Civil War, snipers armed with Whitworth rifles went on a killing spree. Generals John Reynolds, John Sedgwick, William Little, and many other senior officers were killed by bullets fired from insane distances. Sedgwick, for example, was taken down by an unnamed sniper from 910 meters. It's funny that before he died, John said that the opponents will not be able to hit an elephant from this distance. Eventually, the British will start using snipers, but during World War I, they will embarrass themselves again. The legendary German Mauser and traditional German military genius will enter the stage. The Germans realized that in the conditions of trench warfare, it is advantageous to have snipers who will strike the fools who stick out. At first, the British and French blamed the losses on random shots, but later realized that they also needed snipers. But the Canadians did it best. Armed with Ross rifles with Canadian-made optics, the guys did a lot of damage during World War I. Philip MacDonald shot 70, Henry Norwest killed 100, and Francis Pegamagabo got 378. He holds the record for confirmed kills during World War I. However, it is worth noting that Germans had more snipers, and in general, they can be considered winners in a sense. And the winners of the competition for the best rifle were the Brits. 
Their new Lee Enfield rifle is considered by many historians to be the best device ever. Multi-loaded, excellent optics, and incredible accuracy were the key to its success, and the rifle was actively used for 100 years. But the real pinnacle of the sniper era was World War II. If snipers were still a novelty during the first one, now the technological progress and the fact that it was the largest conflict in history brought the art of elimination to a new level. As a matter of fact, it all started a little earlier with a guy named White Death. Finnish sniper Simo Hyaya was a real pain for the Red Army during the Soviet-Finnish War of 1939 through 1940. Since childhood, Simo stood out for his excellent shooting, and in just three months at the front lines, he made history. Using a modified Mosin rifle, which the Finnish remade, the guy, according to various sources, has made around 505 to 542 successful shots. Such performance, according to Simo himself, is due to training. In battle, the guy did not use optics and relied only on the foresight and various tricks. For example, he kept snow in his mouth so that the steam from his mouth did not give away his position. Also, Simo froze the snow under the rifle so that it would not flail around after the shot. It is worth noting that the Finnish sniper's record is mercilessly criticized because unlike most shooters, Simo's numbers are based only on his words. But still, in terms of effectiveness, this is one of the most skilled snipers in history. Matthaus Hatzenhauer, who served as a private in the Wehrmacht's 144th Mountain Regiment, can compete with Simo. Germans, same as in World War I, used snipers extensively in the Second Conflict, and the 144th Regiment was special. Two of Germany's most skilled shooters served in it at once, Joseph Allerberger with 257 confirmed hits, and Matthaus with 345 of them. The guy joined the army at the age of 17, even before coming of full age. However, he only started service as a sniper in July 1944. Matthaus's devices were the pinnacle of military inventions of that era. The Mauser 98K with a 6x zoom and the semi-automatic Gerwer 43 with a 4x zoom are rifles that can still make a sniper's mouth water. Matthaus is one of the few soldiers awarded Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross, the highest award of Germany. But he wasn't the greatest sniper of all time. The vast majority of ratings will rank Vasily Zaitsev as the number one, and we won't argue. Even if his official score is 242 hits, which is less than some of the guys on the list, there are several things that make Vasily a great shooter. Firstly, even before receiving a sniper rifle, Zaitsev killed 32 enemy soldiers from a wooden three-line rifle, which the German snipers would deem useless, and at most use as a stand. We're kidding, of course, the rifle is all right, but to put it simply, the soldier's configuration is not fit for a sniper. That did not prevent Vasily from shooting three German soldiers out of the window from an 800-meter distance. These shots are a serious competition for the title of best in history. After receiving a sniper rifle, Zaitsev went all out. In just a month and a half in Stalingrad, Vasily took down 225 enemy soldiers and officers, 11 of whom were also snipers. One historical duel between Vasily and the head of the German sniper school, Heinz Thorwald, was even depicted in the movie Enemy at the Gates. Why do we think Vasily is the best? At least because the conditions in which he sniped were perhaps the most severe among all the participants on the list. Throughout history, there wasn't a massacre like the Battle of Stalingrad. On average, a solar lived mere days during it. Simply surviving this hell required incredible skills. And Vasily not only survived, but was able to shoot and remain unnoticeable. That takes mad skill. American soldiers in Iraq choose positions based on GPS and satellite coordinates, but it took a predatory instinct to choose a position in Stalingrad, which Vasily had, no doubt about it. And if all that wasn't enough, he fired a rifle with a 4X scope, and Heinz Thorwald, for example, had a 10X scope, genius of German engineering. In our day and age, the art of sniping is brought to the cosmic level. And if we don't take into account circumstances, modern snipers achieve insane results. Guys from Texas Hill Country Rifle hit a target with a 90 centimeter diameter from a distance of 3,475 meters with 90% accuracy. In combat, an unnamed Canadian sniper shot a target from a distance of 3,540 meters using a Macmillan TAC-50 rifle. But still, times have changed. And this is a competition of modern engineering more than pure skill. This is where we'll end our dive into history. We hope you enjoyed it. See you later, friends.